Thank you so much. We are honored that you would spend the time here with us, and I know you have a, a full, full agenda of things to take care of. I'd like to uh, start uh, by asking you, as kind of the CEO of the government here, what are your priorities right now as you look at Georgia's development, its economy, its democracy, its integration into Europe, its integration into NATO, challenges with Russia? How do you frame your priorities? What, what, is, what is on your to-do list? Thank you very much, Kurt. I am very pleased to be here. Uh, I would like to thank John McCain Institute and EPRC for organizing this forum. I would like to also thank all the sponsors of this traditional forum, and I am very glad to be here to see a lot of friends of Georgia, uh, some of them coming back for a while. And uh, this is a really great opportunity for us to discuss where we are and what are our priorities. I would like to um, thank you for your question. Uh, there are, of, of course, a number of uh, priorities in our agenda. I would say that priority for us, uh, first of all, is uh, not only to keep consistency towards EU and NATO, but to keep the high pace uh, while staying consistent towards our <coughs> ambitions. And in order to ensure the high pace, uh, we need to implement a number of reforms, uh, politically, uh, political reforms, uh, constitutional reform, introducing more democratic electoral legislation, and also, of course, to in, uh, implement uh, our four-point reform agenda, which relates to education, uh, speeding up economic growth, uh, ensuring inclusiveness and open governance, and also the spatial development of the country. And uh, all these uh, together, of course, um, uh, creates, uh, again, the, our high priority to ensure high pace towards Europe and NATO and transforming this country and uh, creating a really uh, Western democracy in this country in a very challenging neighborhood. Right. And how do you assess Georgia's progress so far? I mean, Georgia has come a long way, but there is a long way to go. What is your assessment of where Georgia stands in its realization of democratic values, its development of institutions, and so forth? I think we have a very good progress. Um, we, we can judge based on the last five years uh, uh, results, and I think that, uh, first of all, we have much better situation in the human rights protection. We have institutionalized human rights protection. Um, we, it, it is also reflected in various international rankings. Uh, we also have much better uh, judicial system today than we had five years ago. We have much more dynamic uh, and inclusive economic growth uh, than we had a couple of years ago because, the, because we had the crisis caused by the uh, Ukraine situation, an invasion of Russia to Ukraine. So I think that overall we have association agreement right now. We have an uh, action plan based on the association agreement. We have deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with Europe, and we have visa liberalization, which was one of the biggest achievements of our government. And I think uh, having also the highest growth rate in this region in our economy, I think it's a very good result. I brought with me, by the way, the um, compiled reports of Georgia and international rankings. I would like to leave it to you, and uh, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, various international institutions like um, Heritage Foundation, you know, this Fraser Institute. Can I ca spend a couple of minutes on this? It's about index of economic freedom. We had advanced by, um, uh, from 14th place to 5th place. Uh, intensity of local competition, we opened up several industries for more competition. Uh, from 128th place, to 78th position in World Economic Forum. This was one of the most problematic areas in the previous administration. This is also a taxation system that was changed and we moved up in World Economic Forum rankings. This is a prevalence of non-tariff barriers, but most importantly, I would say, it's ownership rights protection where we moved from below 130th position 
uh, to uh, 50s. So it was a major jump, and also I think, which is highly debated right now. I'm reminded of a joke as I'm looking at this. You remember the American comic Groucho Marx? Uh, he said, uh, I wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> but this is great achievement for Georgia. Uh, this is judicial independence, which is highly debated today. You can see that it's World Economic Forum ranking. In 2012, we were uh, at 91st position. And we moved up by 28 points to 63rd position. And it's also media freedom, which uh, reflects the level of democracy in this country. It's reporters without borders. And uh, you can see that we were 105th just five years ago, and we are number 64 right now. So this is not um, something we are uh, totally happy about, but of course, this is an important indicator of the progress in this country. Well, this is, this is terrific. I'm very impressed that you are paying close attention to these indices and monitoring the progress of the country. Um, let me ask, since you brought up last media freedom, because uh, that's an issue that has been uh, debated a lot in Georgia, about uh, access to the media, ownership of the media, diversity of voices within the media, including ownership of one of the particular television stations. How do you see that and where is that going? Well, first of all, um, we, we need to compare what we have today to something what we had in the past. Again, just five years ago, we had three nationwide broadcasting channels reporting all the same narrative, and it was totally controlled by the central government. Today, we have twice more uh, nationwide channels three times more, actually, it's, if I'm not mistaken, today it's 13, and more than 60 local channels. This is a huge jump if we compare to the situation five years ago. But more importantly, we introduced the digital switchover project where we have ample of frequencies today and we streamline the process of uh, authorization of the new channels. It only takes uh, 10 uh, uh, the calendar days uh, in order to get uh, permission for broadcasting. And it, the process is very straightforward. As to the Rustavi channel, you know, I'm, I think we all noticed that there is no intervention uh, in the operation of this channel. There was a court decision, which we all respect, of course. Then there was a um, human rights court decision from Strasbourg, which we also, we may not agree with that, but we also respect the decision. And the channel is operating today, despite uh, huge budget indebtedness. We um, made a decision to <coughs> let the channel operate and not to freeze their accounts. And uh, this was a decision in order to, again, to show the will of the government to ensure free media environment. Another area that I've heard a lot about uh, from foreign investors is business climate in Georgia. They particularly have expressed concerns about um, what they perceive as fairness or unfairness in the court process and their ability to function successfully as international investors. Uh, you highlight some of the issues of transparency and climate here, but talk a little bit about how you see the business climate in Georgia and the independence and fairness of the judiciary in dealing with investment issues? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I never say that we reached the point where we should be completely satisfied. Of course, there is a long way to go, but it's important that during our government, we introduced, with the help of our partners and the United States, first of all, EU, um, the three waves of the judicial reform. Today, we can say that uh, Supreme Council of Justice uh, has uh, uh, much more independence. I would say that uh, the, the, the principles of appointing judges is totally different. And of course, we are implementing now the third wave of the legislative reforms, which will make judicial system even more independent and professional. Just very recently, in the frameworks of the Investor Council, which is a, a special body created 
with the initiative of EBRD and uh, where we have all the major financial institutions together with several ministers uh, presenting the economic block of the cabinet and also local uh, leading business association leaders. Uh, we introduced an initiative <coughs> to introduce commercial chambers to train the judges to discharge the current uh, public courts from commercial cases and to uh, build capacity of the judges who will deal with the business cases. And uh, I think that it can change uh, dramatically the situation. Um, I am not saying that we have a perfect uh, judicial system. I understand the rooms and gaps for development, but at the same time, we come from a system which we, we inherited five years ago, where we had more than 350 cases in the Strasbourg court annually. And today we have less than 70, which is comparable to Norway. I'm not saying that we are at the level of Norway in human rights protection, but I'm saying that the trend is uh, extremely positive. Mm -hmm. And I think that consistency to continue this trend is extremely important to ensure uh, business climate. But overall business environment, if you are asking, which contains, again, many components. And you can see, you can see that it's a um, uh, World Economic Forum ranking. We were below 100. And now uh, we are, if I'm not mistaken, 44th position in the world. It is a dramatic, yeah, you can see, this is doing business. Actually, I need to say that doing business ranking was improved mostly during the previous administration. This shows that we appreciate the achievements of the previous administration. This is macroeconomic environment, World Economic Forum, where we had 137th place five years ago, and today we have um, 40th position, 97 points up. It shows that, you know, overall, this country is improving. You cannot uh, change everything in one moment. As we were talking about um, accepting diversity, and I'm fully um, in favor of accepting diversity. Uh, and of course, um, a strong identity based on accepting identity, I think this is a very good um, uh, expression of where should Georgia be, but at the same time, politicians should encounter the um, current um, perceptions in the society. So we cannot attack everything at once. We need to embrace our society and move forward towards developing our society. So with all due respect, I would like to disagree with uh, some of the assessments of Mr. President when we were uh, evaluating the uh, constitutional process. And let me move to that issue, yes. as this is the most important issue in our agenda. You asked about priorities. There is a quest in this uh, uh, society to move towards more democracy. And only Georgian Dream responded to this quest and created constitution via inclusive process of discussions within the Constitutional Commission. And the constitution, draft of the constitution, which is adopted through two hearings, is a result of concession. This is a result of concession. This is not perfect, maybe. It cannot make everybody happy. But this is a result of concession. I can list several very important issues in the Constitution. And this is strong parliament. We are moving to a real parliamentary republic. This is very important to understand. This is effective government. This is independent judiciary. This is non-partisan president. Everything is embedded in the new Constitution. I can tell you that we made several concessions. This is about, first of all, the major concession is to move to the proportional, fully proportional uh, parliament. And this was not an easy decision. It, it, we had very hot discussions within society and also within our majority. And our majority, by the way, consists of five different parties. This is not a, uh, uh, I mean, the united, only one Georgia Dream Party. We made a concession lowering 5% threshold for 2020 election. Another concession was to hold one more 
direct uh, elections for president for six years in order to be able to introduce uh, the, uh, the indirect pre presidential elections together with shifting to uh, proportional. We made a concession to change the so-called bonus system in order to limit the maximum seats in the parliament uh, to 90, uh, 89 seats. And also, if a uh, ruling party will not get 76 mandates, we are not entitled to get any bonus. And the bonus itself is limited to 35% of the votes that we will receive. An effective government. It wasn't also easy for a prime minister to streamline and simplify the procedure of non-confidence um, to, the, to the prime minister. Today, according to the new constitution, dismissing prime minister is a very simplified process, and I agree to that. It was almost, and it is still almost, until we accept, adopt a new constitution, it's almost impossible to dismiss the prime minister because it was, this place was prepared for a uh, previous, uh, pre previous president as he was going to move to prime ministerial right. position. Right. An effective government also means a uh, much higher accountability of the government to parliament. And it is embedded in the constitution too. Independent judiciary, you asked, now we have, instead of 13 judges, we have 28 judges. And the overall composition of the Supreme Justice Council is totally different, and the decision-making process is different, and the Supreme Council is entitled to nominate the judges. It is also a big change. I would also like to say about human rights and generally supporting diversity. Rights to physical integrity, gender equality, rights of people with disabilities, independence of public broadcaster, internet accessibility, entrepreneurial freedom, right to good governance. Everything is embedded in, in, in the current constitution and most importantly in the transitional clauses, we included Euro-Atlantic aspiration as the major strategic line for our foreign policy uh, aspirations. I think this constitution we need to adopt, it may not again make happy opposition. And let's look at the opposition. Again, with all respect to all the individuals, this is a political agenda to oppose anything that will be proposed from the government. This is an unfortunate reality we have right now. And very unfortunately, we need to face this reality and we need to consistently promote this constitution because there is a risk of failure to live with the existing constitution forever. And I need to say that the fact itself that we have a constitutional majority today is still a response of the society to authoritarian rule Georgia had five years ago. The first parliament in 2012 with constitutional majority unfortunately failed to adopt new constitution and that second parliament that we have today it also has the constitutional majority and I'm repeating this is a response to the previous administration we had. We will probably, for a long time, we will not have a constitutional majority in our parliament. This is a historic chance and unfortunately we are risking through undercutting our efforts to adopt the document which is by all international uh, expert opinions including the Venice Commission opinion is a democratic constitution with proper balances between different institutions we are risking to live with the um, existing constitution. I am of course not intimidating anyone and this is not a blackmailing from our side. I know exactly what is the situation in our majority and uh, I cannot risk uh, splitting the majority because we need this majority in order to go forward with very, very important reform agenda of our country. Thank you. Well, thank you for that very rich explanation. I, I, I hope it's, if you don't mind, if I'll ask a couple questions as follow-up as well, too. But the first is, of course, the previous government lost the election and there was a peaceful change of power. Um, so I, I know you just referred to them as an authoritarian government, but 
you did have a peaceful change of power under the previous Constitution. So my question would be, what is it about the current Constitution that doesn't work? You know, what needs to be fixed? Well, there are a lot of, I think, distortions in the current Constitution, imbalances among various institutions. We have a very strong executive government. Uh, the parliament is not as strong as it should be in the parliamentary republic. There are a lot of duplications in the functions between uh, presidential and prime ministerial role, etc., etc. And also, you know, this uh, uh, majoritarian system. We need to agree that we need to change. This is why we are proposing this change. I think it will be a historical change and one of the most uh, important legacies of our government to shift to uh, the uh, fully proportional system. Now, you know, we can have, we can debate about how authoritarian was the previous administration. I remember all the process. I was uh, an MP in uh, 2004 when uh, UNM introduced, um, right after the revolution, first parliamentary, uh, uh, first changes to the constitution, strengthening the prime ministerial role when we had still the presidential republic. I was the only MP in that government in my party who opposed this change. And uh, because it was a huge distortion in the principles, basic principles of uh, constitutional legislation and the balance of power. Then I remember the whole process and uh, it's, it's important to say that the, in the period between uh, 2004 and 2012, I was a private uh, businessman and of course I know everything what was going on in this country. And I remember, of course I was closely watching politics all the time. And I remember a coalition of eight parties um, during Saakashvili time, which was created in order to change the electoral legislation. And I remember what were the methods, and let me not elaborate here about the details of these methods used by UNM in order to dissolve the coalition of the eight parties. Then we had coalition of six parties, and it was the last hope of the, government, of the society who had a very strong quest to establish democracy in this country. And again, with dirty methods, this coalition of six parties was dissolved by active engagement of the UNM. And then you are calling the peaceful transition of power. I'm sorry, but what is peaceful transmission of power? I would not call 2012 elections and the whole pre election process peaceful. It was intimidation arresting, monitoring all opposition members. Do we have anything like this here today? Of course, again, I'm saying that we are not um, in a reach, we have not reached the state where we should be relaxed and happy. But there is a tremendous change that happened in this country during these years. And of course, we need support of our friends in order to keep this consistency towards bringing more democracy, bringing more diversity. And believe me, this constitution will bring much more democracy in this country. Great. Thank you. I have one more question on this and then uh, one international question. But what was the thought process uh, in your government uh, between amending the current constitution? Because you've identified some areas, for instance, the relative power of the president versus the relative power of the parliament. Why not amend the previous constitution? Why produce an entirely new one? Well, I, you, you can call it entirely a new constitution or amended constitution. It, it's, it's, I don't see big difference. There are a number of a list of changes that we are introducing to the current constitution. We can call it a new constitution, but there were several important issues that we are amending in the existing constitution. I don't see a principal difference there. And my, my final question for you, Prime Minister, the same as I asked the, the President, when you look at the United States, at Europe, at NATO, and you look at Georgia's aspirations and integration into your Atlantic institutions, 
What advice do you have for your international partners? What should we be doing? For us, uh, it's extremely important to have very strong European Union supporting value-based aspirations of countries like Georgia, like Ukraine, like Moldova. It is extremely important for us to have strong United States with very strong engagement in ensuring peace and stability in our region. And it is extremely important to have strong NATO, which is the only institutional mechanism existing right now for the civilized, liberal world in order to ensure peace and stability in this region. This is why for us it is extremely important to ask our friends and allies to help Georgia, as I said in the beginning, not only to keep consistency, but also to keep pace of this reform and to help us also to keep this pace. Without United States help during these uh, 26 years of um, regaining independence, it would have been absolutely impossible uh, to, to be in the position where we are right now. Without the help of the friends and the allies of European Union, our friends, it would have been impossible to uh, sustain existence, the very existence of the country which is called Georgia. Despite the challenges we have and despite territorial integrity violation, occupation, daily threats, the country is consolidated around this goal to develop country, to move and not to concede in our foreign policy aspirations and in our territorial integrity. It's very important to understand that Georgia is no longer a post-Soviet country. We are an Eastern European country with democracy and with aspirations to get even closer and to become a full member of NATO and full member of the European Union. There we need your help to consolidate opinions and positions of countries uh, to, to reach the consensus over European prospects of Georgia and also membership in NATO. This is very important for us. This is existentially important for us. Thank you. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much. Uh, you are here among many, many friends who are great supporters of Georgia, great believers in Georgia's values, its aspirations, its identity as a European country. Um, you are a strong and passionate defender of your country. I want to thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you for your message. And please join me in thanking the Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you.